It's Mel and today I'm doing my August wrap up and September TBR. I sort of read quite a few books in August, not as many as I'd hoped to, but that was kind of unrealistic. So I have a lot of books to show you and I'll jump right in. The first book that I read last month was Harry Potter and the Cursed Child by J.K. Rowling and loads of other people. This was the eighth story, it's not really a book because it's a play, but anyway I read it because I could and I didn't really like it, I didn't hate it. Whenever I think about it I just want to sigh for like a really long time. It wasn't great, just like why? If you've read this you'll know what I'm talking about. Why did any of these things happen? What even is this book. The next two books that I read were actually graphic novels, the first of them being Ms Marvel No Normal, the first volume of the graphic novel series for Ms Marvel. This came out like two years ago and it's about this girl Kamala who really loves superheroes, like I can relate to that. And then there's this massive fog thing and she turns into a superhero and she's all like I want to be white and blonde and then she's white and blonde and then she's like I don't like this anymore I want to be me so she turns into a shapeshifter which is cool and I found something out about the most recent addition to this series which is quite cool but I won't tell you guys because it is sort of a spoiler not really but anyway I am really excited to get further into the series and I really enjoyed the first installment. The next graphic novel I read was The Wicked and the Divine the Faust Act the first volume of The Wicked and the Divine which is an amazing graphic novel series which is just hilarious and weird <laughs> and it's about these gods that are only alive for two years and then they come back like 90 years later and they like possess teenagers. It's really queer and it's really great and I, I just love it so much. I actually did a blog post on the LGBT Amino app about LGBT characters in comics and this was one of the comics that I mentioned. The next book that I read is one of my favourites and that is Six of Crows by Lee Vardugo. I tried to read this at like the start of the summer. I did get around to it but I'm really glad that I have now because it was amazing and really intense and I can't wait like the 20 days it is till the second one comes out and I don't want this duology to be over. I love it so much. If you don't know what it's about, I mean it doesn't really matter, you should just buy it anyway, but this book is about six criminals. Some of them were in this gang, some of them weren't. They're all from really different backgrounds and like just ways of life and they all band together to do this impossible mission to break this guy out of this prison compound thing and they'll get like paid so much if they manage to pull it off and they're like doing it for a part of the government so it's like Suicide Squad but with good magic because apparently that movie has magic but the magic sucked and everyone's paired up into these cute little couples that you want all of them to work out and I can't cope with the ending because I need to know what happens and I need all of them to be happy but that's like not gonna happen. There's no way that they're all gonna be happy. And the book that I read after that was Guardian by Alex London. I read Proxy probably like two years ago. I didn't really like it because I like really don't like dystopian sci-fi books and this is a dystopian sci-fi duology but this book was different. I really liked the relationships and just how everything happened and the drama and I thought it was way better than the first one which is probably gonna be expected seeing as I'm pretty sure it's the only books 
that have been published by this author. I really, really wanted to know whether these characters made it in the end and it kind of broke me. <laughs> like I finished it and I was like, what is the point of anything? I don't care anymore. I'm just gonna be sad. There was an illness in this book that was very much like the vampire disease in Cosco and Cold Town and the endings were sort of similar. Like it's kind of difficult because they're part of the duology but I wouldn't recommend the first one but I would recommend this one. The next book was sort of a disappointment and that was Beauty Queen by Libba Bray. I'm really excited to like this everyone's like oh it has a trans character, it has a queer character, it's really good and lovely and I was like it's about a plane full of beauty queens that get stranded on a desert island in a crash and they have to survive and it's kind of like a take on Lord of the Flies but they got off the island because they're girls and girls can do stuff but it really wasn't, it was like it just felt like the author was really bitter about everything in pop culture. There's this boy band called Boys Will Be Boys, spelt with loads of Zs, and there was something about them having songs like Let Me Shave Your Legs Girl and um, Tween Crush and stuff like that. And then there were reality shows about rock star pirate guys that came from English boarding schools and literally everything was the most ridiculous thing and there was also this government conspiracy and like this guy that was gonna kill them all and there was like bats of acid and yachts and it was just the most ridiculously ridiculous thing I've ever read and like yeah there was a trans character but the only reason you knew that she was trans was because she got naked in front of every single person that she ever met. Like, what? And then the queer girl is like the only one that ends up not in a relationship. Everyone else is like paired off and she's like, well, I had a girlfriend for like five seconds, but she's actually straight, so it's, I don't like it at all. Like, why would she be naked all of the time? He was like, I got stung by a jellyfish, someone has to pee on me. Oh yes because out of the like 50 people that are there at that very second it has to be the trans girl that pulled her pants down yep that seems like a good idea i really don't like it and i don't understand how people can read it and like it like loads of people really love it and like did we read the same book because that wasn't a good book the next book that i read was also a graphic novel and that was blue is the warmest color by julie marrow this was so different from the movie. I saw the movie quite a while ago and it wasn't anything like this. I mean, it's kind of because the movie was like, oh yes, let's have a guy, a straight guy, try and make a lesbian relationship realistic. And the book's like, let's have this queer girl write about queer girls. It starts and you're like, oh, she's dead that doesn't happen in the movie and then it's like oh this is the relationship also why would you walk around this closeted girl's house naked when her parents were there first of all you shouldn't have been having sex in the first place second of all you shouldn't have been naked third of all you should not have walked all the way through the house naked when the parents could be there and chuck her out of the house basically i don't really like the blue haired one Artistically, it was interesting. Story-wise, it was cool. Character-wise, they're all a bit of an idiot. Also, it like didn't go into anything. It was like really, really short compared to the movie, and there were a lot of differences. I definitely felt sad at reading this than watching the movie, and this is another one that I wrote down on that blog post. And during all that time I had been reading Much Ado About Nothing by William Shakespeare because if you watched some of my recent videos you might know that I'm really into Shakespeare inspired web series and there are a lot of that are like just let's take this play but make it gayer which is always fun. The first one that I saw was a sequel to one that was based on Much Ado About Nothing and then the second one that I watched was that I already knew the story, basically, 
and then I felt like this was an easy play to read. I've already read like three other ones so and this is an edition which like translates words and like tells you what's happening in each scene so it's like the ones where they have the English on one side and then the older English on the other. It was much easier to read than just like pure Shakespeare because that's kind of nonsense. And lastly I finished The Mime Order by Samantha Shannon, the second book in the Bone Season series which is gonna be like seven books and the third book comes out next year so that's gonna be interesting. I loved the first book, the second book was also great. I mean like there was this one kiss, um, I'm not gonna spoil anything but these two characters kissed for the first time in books like it wasn't their first kiss but like it's only one character's perspective so like she watches these two characters kiss and I was so unbelievably happy that I was like okay that was sort of worth really like a thousand pages worth of books just to get to that one moment like I was really happy for like an hour because of just like five words and also I feel really sorry for people that read this when it came out because I'm still gonna have to wait quite a bit for the next book but like <laughs> the ending just is such a cliffhanger this is also another one which is gonna be really hard to wait for another book for so those were all the books that I read last month so those were all the books that I read last month, now on to the books that I'm planning to read this month. The first book that I've already started is quite an interesting one, I've had it for quite some time but it had like a thing on it that was difficult to undo. Anyway, that is S by JJ Abrams and another dude. Like, it, it looks like a different book because it's supposed to be like a library book like the Iliad or something probably but like it's written in and there's like things in it so like this is the page that I'm on I have my bookmark and then we have the actual book and then we have all of this written around the outside and then we have this is two different letters one of them is in German one of them is in English they're like the same letter they say please burn after reading and it's all of this like official documents and like that, that's not really in a book normally and then here we have a photocopied picture of newspaper here we have a postcard one of many postcards that are littered throughout this also has writing on which is fun and there's a disc thing that makes no sense to me at the very back. This is probably gonna take me forever. Normally people say that you should read it twice, like read the text and then read all of the other stuff, but I think I'm just gonna like read it two at a time because like I can read like five different like 30 chapter long fan fictions on the go that have like the same exact people and then read the actual series of books that they're based on like at the same time and not get confused so I think I'm good with this. Like I said I've had this for ages but I was really daunted by it but now that I've started reading it I think it's gonna be fine. Next I'm gonna try and read a book that I've been trying to read for quite a few months and that is Manus Chase and the Sword of summer this is the first book in the minus chase series so this fits into the other 11 crime books that i've read i've read all of the other percy books but not this one because it doesn't have nico in and i've only read percy for nico so but i can normally read rick Riordan books really fast because they are sort of children's books so this should sort of balance out with the books that i may have to read like three times to understand vaguely next i have a couple short books to talk about the first one being edgar Allan poe the telltale heart i actually believe this is three edgar Allan poe stories it's penguin classics little black book number 31 
so whatever that is I'm gonna read it. The next mini book that I have to show you is Lady in the Van A True Story by Alan Bennett. For how big this is, this is actually like the cost of an actual book which I think is ridiculous. But this is the memoir that the movie is based on and I already read the History of Boys like a couple times I did an essay on it. I haven't seen the movie but I plan to as soon as I can like reach it. The last mini book is Kindred Spirits by Ray Morrell. This is a tiny little short story about a girl who's obsessed with Star Wars before Star Wars got cool again. So yeah. And Fine Girl and Carry On by Ray Morrell are some of my favourite books ever so this should be fun. The next book is another one that I've been trying to read for quite a while and that is An Ember in the Ashes by Sarah Tahir. This is probably about magic in a castle but I have no idea and I don't plan to find out until I read it. Everyone loves it and a sequel just came out so I'm gonna try and read it but I have a lot of books to read and I'm going back to school and my mum is like you should have already started studying. And the last book that I have to show you is Throne and Rising by Lee Bardugo, the third book in the Grisha trilogy. This is set in the same world as Six of Crows but it's not as good a series like everyone agrees on that. I read the first book ages ago, the second book a while ago and now I suppose that I should probably read a book in a series saying as I have an entire shelf dedicated to first books in series I haven't read I should probably finish a series. So those were all the books I had to show you for my wrap up and TBR. I hope you enjoyed. Bye!